Okay, shalom everyone and welcome to a Monday night Torah study. We are, this week is a double portion, it is Parashat uh, Vayechel and Pekodi. And so we're looking at, uh, let's see, Exodus 35 to chapter 40. And I think that's both Torah portions. Uh, I didn't check that. But I think that's both Torah portions. So, But I titled the study for this week, Resting in the Messiah in the meaning of the Shabbat. Okay, that's really interesting. Now, in Parashat, Parashat uh, Vayechel opens with Moshe instructing the people, and he says the following. It says in Exodus 35, verses 1 through 3, he says, it says, then, then Moshe assembled all of the congregation of Israel, of the sons of Israel, and said to them, these are the things the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days you may do, work may be done, but on the seventh day, shall be a holy day, a, shab, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall not kinder a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. Okay, so the concept of not working on the Shabbat is related to our remembering the Lord God Almighty and what He has done on our behalf. And Moshe begins by instructing the people that they are to obey all of the things the Lord has commanded them, and then leads into the commandment on the Shabbat. You know, the way Moshe writes the performing of the work on the Sabbath day, you know, according to the Hebrew text, is very interesting. We read in, in verse chapter 35, verse 2, it says, it says, for six days work may be done, okay, on the seventh day you shall have a holy day, a Sabbath of complete rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. Now, the, the word, the Hebrew text, uses the word, instead of the word avodah, you know, for work, the Torah uses the word melecha, okay? And the root word for melecha is related to melech, you know, an angel or a messenger. And so, a little later on in the Torah, then we read that Moshe describing the people bringing gifts or contributions to the construction for the construction of the tabernacle and the masoretic text it writes that in the in the following way it says it says the yavo kol ish asher naasu libo the kol asher nadva rucho oto haviu et terumat adonai lim lechet ohel moed and it says the the Vilecho avodato ul vigdai hakodesh. Okay, so now, okay, so now here the two key words in this this Hebrew sentence in, in Exodus thirty five verse twenty one is the lim lechet is one, and the other one is avodato. Okay, so we we find these two words avoda. Okay, and avodato avoda and uh, melecha, okay, in, in, in the word lim lachet, okay, and so these are related to the construction of the things in the tabernacle. Now, based on the way these words are used here, the word melecha leans towards a spiritual or a heavenly aspect of the work that Moshe is describing in relation to the uh, to the tabernacle and this is this is drawn out from the text in the sense that in the connection to the root word melech okay for angel or messenger and the word avodah tends towards a more physical or an earthly aspect of work and so the rabbis describe these things as the torah prohibiting the performance of certain categories of activities indicated by the word melecha and the the torah describes the lighting of fire as an example of such a forbidden category of activity being related to both spiritual and heavenly connection. Now the way the words Abudah and Melecha are used in the Masoretic text that's coupled to the rabbinic interpretation on the use of these words, we learn that Abudah is a reference to a physical work, you know, worldly, and Melecha is to a spiritual work, you know, having, having a deeper spiritual meaning in connection to the service of God in the tabernacle. Now, the, the, the Shabbat, the Sabbath rest, has both of these connotations. It has a, a spiritual, a deep spiritual, and also a, a physical rest. And the concept that is drawn out from the commentary 
that, for example, from Or HaChayim on Exodus 35, verse 2, speaks of the completion of creation, of being connected to an entire week, including the Sabbath rest. And the Sabbath was the reason why the eighth day was chosen for circumcision of a newborn male and why a newborn calf was not qualified for a sacrifice until having followed eight days, which included a Sabbath day rest. Now, the commentary Or HaChayim has the following to say concerning uh, these things in Exodus 35, verse 2. It says that there is also a lesson here that the success of the work performed during the six days of the week depends on the observance of the seventh day as a holy day. And the reason is that the, the, the Sabbath is the soul of the world, as we explained in our introduction on Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. And so let's look at Genesis 2, verse 2. So Or HaChayim states on Genesis 2, 2, it says that we find a similar idea in the Zohar, Tazria, page 13, as to why the rite of circumcision cannot be performed before the eighth day, and why an animal is not fit to serve as a sacrifice until the eighth day of its life. In either case, one has to wait until at least one, one Sabbath day you know, has passed so that each has attained a nefesh, a soul full of vitality. You know, our verse then describes God as putting the finishing touch to his creation by bringing on the Shabbat, you know, not by creating on the Sabbath, the reason the Torah repeats once more for, that is from all his work, which he had done, you know, the way it repeats this once more, is to emphasize that this work had been done previously. You know, for example, before the onset of the Shabbat. You know, the word v'yachol therefore refers to activity carried out previously. All that had been lacking was something that would give performance to this universe of ours. The seventh day, for example, the Sabbath, completed the cycle that provides this performance, we are therefore entitled to view the Sabbath as one of the seven days of creation. The proof that we are correct may be the very fact that we do not find the usual, and it was evening and it was morning the seventh day, meaning there was no Berea on that day. There was no creation, no creative act on the Sabbath day. And so, or HaChayim, interprets this, that the, the Shabbat, the Sabbath day, is the soul of the world. And this is connected to the circumcision of the eighth day. One receives a nefesh after having passed through a Sabbath day, you know, a, a complete one-week cycle. And the permanency of God's creation is solidified in the completion of the cycle of one week, which culminates on the Sabbath day. And so the idea is that the Lord put his finishing touches upon a life uh, upon a part of his creation, a living being that he had created in his creation for both man and beast. You know, not living, uh, or so by living one full week, the Lord did this. this. This is what the rabbis are giving a reason why the, uh, for the command for the Shabbat, for the Sabbath. Now notice how the rabbis are also, and we saw in Or HaChayim how um, they're using, on Genesis 2 too, they're using a Kabbalistic approach in the interpretation on the Sabbath. And with this connection to the Brit Mila, you know, the circumcision and the sacrifice from Leviticus 22, verse 26. And in Leviticus 22, it says, uh, the Lord spoke to Moses, and it says that when an ox or a sheep or a goat is born, it shall remain seven days with its mother, and from the eighth day on it shall be accepted as a sacrifice of an offering by fire to the Lord. Whether it is an ox or a sheep, you shall not kill both it and its young in one day. Okay, so again, these concepts draw, drawn out from Leviticus 22, as the Lord states explicitly, that a sacrifice is not acceptable until having gone through an entire week, including the Shabbat. Now, Rashi, he has the following to say on Exodus 35, verse 2, part 1. And he claims that the Lord intentionally mentions the prohibition of working just before the commandments about the building of the tabernacle, because... The work on the tabernacle, which is in, in based on the Hebrew text in the description of avoda, avoda and melacha, that it, it has both a spiritual and a physical connection. You know, both both a spiritual and physical work that does not. So the the point was is that the reason the Lord or Moshe or the Lord had intentionally mentioned this prohibition 
was that so that we would understand that the work in on the tabernacle does not uh, set aside or supersede the Shabbat, the Sabbath rest. The, here, Rashi is Rashi is speaking of not violating the Sabbath rest even for the tabernacle, and he points out how it's interesting that this is written just prior to the construction of the tabernacle. That this is a very important observation, very very important point because. Most Christian commentators will claim that under the law of Moses, man merited or earned his salvation before God. You know, the Torah actually teaches us something different here about one's merits in relation to the Sabbath rest. You know, we do not set our hand to a salvific work. You know, the, the salvation is a work of God. And this is illustrated in the command on the Sabbath rest, superseding both the physical and the spiritual construction in the tabernacle. Now this also teaches us the commandments were not a means for salvation. They, they were a means for living our lives following having attained salvation by faith in the God of Israel and in his Messiah Yeshua. You know again note how this runs contrary to classical Christian theology. You know, note also how properly understanding Torah tears down this idea of legalism and the law. You know and note that legalism is stressing obedience apart from faith. You know, the scriptures speak, however, of God working in our lives to produce both faith and faithfulness that then leads to a desire to obey his word. You know, it is in this way that the Lord God Almighty and his Messiah, Yeshua, are the author and the finisher of our faith, just as the author of Hebrews wrote in Hebrews chapter 12. Now, when we properly understand Torah, you know, the centuries of poor exegesis of the Torah, believing that man earned his salvation just utterly disappears. You know, if we interpret these things from a, a mystical approach, you know, like the, the type and the shadow, you know, the type and shadows of the Lord dwelling in our midst by his spirit in the tabernacle of our bodies, being connected to his dwelling place and the significance of dying to self and seeing God. You know, there, there is a very significant aspect here to the command on the Shabbat, the Sabbath rest. You know, Rashi speaks of not violating the Sabbath rest, rest even for the tabernacle. And he points out how this was written just prior to the construction of the tabernacle. You know, these things teach us that we do not set our hand to a salvific work. You know, the, the scriptures do not speak of man earning his salvation you know it is salvation is a work of god and the rest that the lord god almighty provides for us consists of both a physical and spiritual rest you know this is how the messiah yeshua used the meaning of the shabbat in the application of resting in him and in the concept of taking hold of his torah you know the salvation that god provides is by the means of the Lord God Almighty dwelling in our midst. You know, that this is this is a very Torah-centric principle. You know, the Lord God Himself enters into our lives and He He lives in us and through us and He uses us for His purposes. You know, just as it says in Philippians 2, verse 13. You know, um, the Lord in the, the promises of, of all of Scripture and the promises of God is that He by His Spirit he will empower us to walk in his ways, you know, and to have a desire to live for him. You know, this is this is a work that he is doing, and it is not a thing that is for merit in the sense that we merit, you know, our salvation. You know, it's just it doesn't it doesn't work. The scripture doesn't speak of that, and these these are the things that come out of the theologies that have been developed over the centuries of anti-Semitism. That, that I, that's what I believe. So. Um, the the idea of the Lord living and dwelling in our midst, you know, very Torah central, you know, very Torah central, and, and in the Messiah because of our faith in Him, I mean, this is the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit that Paul spoke of concerning God, who is at work in us, right? You know, we are we are living for the Lord, and the Lord is at work in us because we have faith and we believe, and He helps us to be faithful then we are going to see the fruit of the Spirit, and that fruit is going to line up with his Torah. You know, it just, it has to. You know, if it don't, then it's not fruit from a tree in the garden of God, right, that, that God takes care of. You know, so anyway, that 
that's what I have for the Torah portion for this week. Um, there are so many powerful things that we can learn, these truths from the Torah and the scriptures. And so um, if, you, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. And if you uh, want to hear more, come back next week. We'll have more. Okay? And thanks for listening. Bye.